Lori is one of the top designers, but she also has some really great copy sense and she's done a lot of writing as well. So she does a lot of design, but, and she really has, has, has really been um, uh, spending a lot of time now. Because, and, and again, she, she said last week, I want to send this stuff in advance, but I don't know if I want to because it's changing every week uh, with COVID and all of that. So I think Lori's got a, a, a very up-to-date presentation on just design in this, in this period, but also they're just great design tips for all time. And I'll let her talk about that. David is, <laughs> is one of the, uh, the top uh, copywriters of all time. Um, he is, uh, you know, in, he's, he's on my Mount Rushmore of uh, the best copywriters of the last uh, 20 years for Boardroom. Um, and there are other people that I could have put on it, but they, the, the ones that I put on it were the ones that did a lot, a lot of work for board. Right. And so, so David and Lori, uh, are, are going to do this presentation. Uh, Lori is, uh, is kind of, uh, it's a, where we are at today, concept shares for copy design and strategy. And so Lori, you're on David, you're kind of on, I guess, how you're going to do this. And, uh, they're great. So go. Yeah, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Great. All right, so I thought I'd give a little backstory on this. Um, I call these collections or cur curations of a sort, and I present these all year long to my clients when we're working on a project so they can understand competitors, where we are, what copy, trend, colors, fonts. But I also do them to make sure that we're on point. And in training designers, I train a lot of designers and copywriters to work effectively together. So we were on business travel in California, February and March. And I don't know if it was different because I wasn't here on the East Coast, but we were seeing things, you know, crescendo. And I, Brian, you know, we talked to you about this after we got back. So we were already seeing like we were the only people on the street without the face masks on. Every time we got in an Uber, they had extra ones in the pocket and we really couldn't figure this out. But since I was already researching for some of my client presentations, I started getting some of these emails that I uh, tie into and I was noticing a, a crescendo and copy change. And so we really started saving them. And again, I will do them for my clients. We'll do them together. And David will do presentations like this on his own. But um, where we are today is really important. So one of the main things I want to point out, and Brian, I'm glad you said that, uh, you know, I stopped collecting for this presentation last week. Last night, I was thinking, although these were projected and saved and curated for, you know, shares like this in COVID, truly, um, I think the biggest thing that I've gotten out of it is that no matter what we're in, whether it's, you know, after this or before, we really do need to do a better job of thinking, staying on point, and making sure that our copy and design is conveying that same message. And we talk about this a lot. So the first one I wanted to share, and David, you probably remember when these uh, came through, Athletic Greens is a company that I follow. I've done some work with them and they just had a new huge brand change. Now this is like two or three emails into their series, but they were the first people that caught on not to say COVID, there's a pandemic, oh my God. They settled down immediately. And I attribute this to you know, a very talented team. So right out of the gate, um, I'm gonna just point to some of these red arrows. Um, they say during this challenging time, and like I just noted, and you know, Brian and I talked about this, they really just skewed and just stayed on top of it. And I'm gonna show you a couple different looks, but I do want you to see the design. Uh, there's a lot of white space, and like Susan was talking about voice, um, the use of white space tends to give us a calm feeling. So in anything you're doing, whether it's an email, a brochure, a sales campaign, something online, that's something to remember. And additionally, look at these calm and exciting colors. They really grab your eye. David, did you want to say anything on this particular page, uh, maybe on the copy or strategic uh, end? 
Well, yeah, I mean, I think just from a copy point of view, as you said, you don't have to say due to COVID-19, we really care <laughs> about our, you know, our employees and it's our first priority. You know, if you just touch on something just so lightly like that during this challenging time, right? You know, let people define what this challenging time is on their own, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether it's challenging health-wise, economically, in all ways, it, it lets them have a little say in it, right? Be especially kind. There's a nice feeling of warmth in the words. Be especially kind to both your mind and body. Remember, immunity is comprehensive. There's no one magic thing, proper nutrition. It's not cramming it down your throat. It's not saying, now you need coat, now you need athletic greens more than ever because it promotes immunity, right? It's just uh -huh. saying, hey, immunity is comprehensive. The better your nutrition, the better your immunity is going to be. And so maybe you'd like, you know, maybe you should consider, you know, it's just very gentle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you hit on a really good point because um, I should have explained this and I'm sorry, but athletic greens is um, a mix. You know, you pour it into your water, you stir it up every morning. It's actually delicious. You should get some and it really works. But it's about gut health. But they also, before all of this, you know, would promote it that with this gut health, you're feeling better. You know, you can get a uh, better sleep and uh, it protects your immunity. So they didn't go crazy on the immunity yet. They're going to save that for later. So um, I, I think another good thing to point out is, and this is something we all have to remember, plan, they planned out this entire campaign. It was so slick and smooth. And, um, you know, if, if you have a chance to maybe look up or uh, tag them, you can get on their emails. So around March, they started uh, going into a little different look, as you can see. It's their bottle, their package is not on the page. They even have tucked away their order button up in here. So if I click on that, you know, I would go to order. But look at these colors, and it's so unique. The fonts are simple to read, and the wording down in here. Over the years, we've learned a few things about working from home. They're already getting you in the mode. And when we show you the next one, you'll see where they burst out of the gate with this. So trusted colors, very simple fonts that are easy to read. It's friendly. It's exciting. And although we've all seen word balloons, I feel like this was really well executed. David, anything on that for you? No, that's a great point about the word balloon. It gives, gives it a nice friendly, you know, mm -hmm. feeling. Like it takes you back to the time of... Um, takes you back to the time of, uh, you know, your childhood in a way, reading comic mm -hmm. books. And, you know, I think that's a real important thing right now. Um, people need comfort, right? You really have to think, like you always encourage people to do, you have to think about your prospect. He's mm -hmm. scared, he needs comfort. That's why, you know, the, the biggest increase right now, I just heard this, in a uh, sales increase of, of things, um, for typically in, in difficult times is Campbell's soup because people want to go back to what they're comfortable with. So things like that, um, you know, give people a nice feeling of comfort, a little, you know, cartoon balloon. And again, just the wording, you know, from tips and tales from a fully remote team. Over the years, we've learned a thing or two about working from home. So friendly, so comforting, right? And, and that's just so important in, in these times. Yeah, and um, then, oh, go um, ahead, uh, Molly, Molly has a question which is relevant, so you might as well. Um, she said, um, would you recommend moving away from the brand's color scheme now for a more comforting, relaxed vibe? And that's a great question, Molly. So here's what I'm saying, and this has changed, um, you know, over the last couple months, and I'll kind of speak to that a little later when we go into some of the finance designs, but Molly, um, I follow or we follow a lot of uh, agencies and Ogilvy has come full force the whole time on the top of their list is staying on brand. So I would say try to incorporate some blues. I'm going to give you some other tips and hints at the very end. Blue is a very trusted color. Brighter colors that will bring calm, excitement, happiness maybe to their day. Um, but I would stay on brand 
And I, I am going to talk about um, trying to veer away from certain fonts and words and colors like bright, shocking red constantly. But I would try to incorporate blues and some cheerfulness. You'll see in the next couple of ones how they did a moving GIF file that's uh, cheerful. But David, did, is that helpful, Molly? Anybody got another question on um, the color? Because that's an excellent, excellent topic. Yeah, I, I would just add, you know, that, and this is something you and I have talked about, Lori, uh, that, you know, so far, everything here is consistent with what we talked about in terms of forward pacing, that, mm -hmm. you know, you've got, you've got a, you've got a little mention, you're not being tone deaf to what's going on, but you're always looking out to the future as well which I think is critically important. And I think it's gonna be true in everything that you and David work on. And I also think that, you know, the thing you said about um, immunity, which was really interesting, because remember when Jeremy Hunziker um, had his, uh, his uh, supplement that was, what, had three natural ingredients and one of the three was, had, had a, a positive effect on your lungs. And he didn't mention COVID, he didn't mention anything, but in the PS of the email, and I think Kim was involved in this, that he would just say, you know, and by the way, this ingredient, you know, is, is also good for lung function. Anybody who doesn't know that lungs are involved with COVID is, <laughs> is, is asleep and they don't, you don't have to re-mention it. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it was for the Sinus Miracles sales page, Kim. And you didn't have to change anything on the sales page because it was already there as a lung thing why bother why you know and that's the big thing about if you keep on emphasizing this stuff because people are scared as david said so um i thought those were really really good points Lori. yeah those are great um one thing i wanted to point out up here in the top right and brian i think you're going to probably be sharing this pdf file in uh the vault so people can download it so you can look at this more uh, oh, good. deeply on your own and i've tried to point them out with these little call outs and the arrows, but look at the subject line, tips and tales from a fully remote team. Now don't forget, this was March 19th, things were just kind of exploding, people were just got, you know, going to be released into their home in lockdown. They were already on the point here and um, ready to push themselves ahead. So next, I know you guys can't see this, but this was lovely. It was such a surprise I woke up to this and these little sprinkles are coming out of this watering can. It was one of those little moving gifts. And it just made me so happy. So they're giving <laughs> something. I will never forget waking up to this. And uh, if I hadn't already known or worked with Athletic Greens and, and known how well it, it worked, I wouldn't have been able to stop thinking about this. So do something a little bit different. Think outside the box. Uh, be helpful. Use a trusting tone, and I know David and I will talk about this in some of the other slides, but um, even if you have to recite your copy, I do this a lot with my uh, clients or just with myself or other copywriters, um, reciting the copy in a certain tone, even though you're not speaking like uh, Susan was, was talking about earlier, just hearing what it's going to sound like in their head and knowing that avatar that really um, helps me. So um, getting back to colors and fonts, they haven't crammed a bunch of stuff up here. They left it open and airy. Again, you can click right here, but it's not like order now, here's our product. They're not showing their product, any of that stuff. They wipe that right off um, the screen. If you, you know, later go through this copy, you can see some of the little notes. Um, uh, it's a tie-in, enter probiotics there in the water your, you know, to your garden, and it ties in with a visual. But again, adding a splash of color, it makes your eye go down. We want them to read the rest of the email and hopefully click and sign up. So these are some little tips and tricks um, on your email or brochure or whatever you're working on sales page. Uh, just a correction, Laurie. You said it made you happy. You're always happy, so it made yeah. you happier. <laughs> now, for the there person who's really depressed, this will make yeah. you happy. Yeah. Okay, just checking, Laurie. You know, you know, I've never seen you not happy. That's uh, well, I do get there, but um, I, you know I'm what, sure, but you know, Brian, not to me. 
this is a perfect time to share this. I just got this information. It's kind of sad information, actually. Um, Tuesday night, I'm on an advisory council. It's a global team, and it's um, with a variety of Purdue experts, psychologists, uh, doctors, and um, we're working on a huge global project. But one of the women, one of the scientists reported this, and it's... Um, they put it in a chat screen, so I copied and pasted it. So you're going to be amazed at some of these numbers. I could not have made a mistake because I copied and pasted it. But it says um, a woman involved that is running the U.S. suicide hotline mentioned that the calls have gone up 900%. So, you know, David mentioned we got to get in the shoes of our reader and, and meet them where they are. February and March in LA, calls went up 8,000%. Holy shit. Nationally, calls went up 330%. So don't forget, like you might be selling your product. You might know this about the person from the past. You might be projecting to the future. But don't forget, at the whole, the same time, while I'm designing or strategizing or looking into the behavior science, the copy, that these people are hurting and we, we do have to remember that. So um, maybe that'll be helpful yet sad. All right, I mentioned how they transitioned. So um, see, see this part, it's a um, special edition food and immunity. They use a little apple icon up there, which is wonderful. The logo again, the small button. Look, they took that big blue chunk, the word balloon, now they're introducing um, each one of their team members that's working remotely and a lovely little story behind them. One of them has children. They talked about cooking at home. But there's this beautiful face smiling and looking back at me. Again, I got it in the morning. How food, sleep, and stress impact your immunity. They're not putting the bottle up there. They're not selling it all. They're giving information, advice, you know, some uh, data that you can read and learn from. And I think education, educating your customer, no matter what you're selling uh, or a service, that, that could be really a good point right now. So you want to get to know um, Haley. And again, our team is fully remote, just like you. You know, we're trying to r run this business here. Anything uh, copy-wise, David, that's helpful on this? You know, I, I think one of the most important things during this time is something that uh, Claude Hopkins talked about a long time ago, which is to just, the main thing that you should be doing is giving service, right? And it's probably never been more true than now. And so to give something like this, like, hey, we want to answer your questions. We want to we wanna help you get rid of the, the stress that's impacting your immunity. This is just like giving. It's not selling. It's not, you know, you know, how our, how our athletic greens give you the nutrition you need to impact your immunity. It's just, it's just giving service and, and you feel comforted and you want to buy from these people. You know, it kicks in all the, you know, Cialdini things, reciprocity, you know, authority that are so, you know, even more important now than they've ever been. Um, those are all great points. Absolutely right. All right, so here's one last thing from them. Um, this is again, staying on point, whether we're in a situation like this or not, making sure you know who your customer is, what they're feeling and where you can reach them. So immediately, and again, I don't know how they got so ahead of the ball, but having a talented, bright team is mandatory. Visiting the grocery store less, less frequently tapping into stock pantries. It can be tough to make sure we're getting enough nutrient dense food. They're not selling anything. They're educating you and trying to push you forward. Um, this is the top of mind for many right now. So something like this and notice this font. Some of the other fonts were a sans serif font, a little smaller. And these are a serif font, which is very friendly. It feels like you're just reading a newspaper or a magazine. Those are some other considerations. It wasn't quite this large, obviously, but see these little chunks. There's not long segments of copy. It's chunked into bite-sized pieces. So you want to digest it and then hopefully click what yes, 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 yes. 
I'd love for you guys, if you haven't, Brian, did you see this uh, commercial from I Ikea? If you haven't seen this commercial, it's brilliant and beautiful. And I can't believe I just happened to have the TV on and I saw it the first time it aired. I looked it up, but you can go to this link. Um, just brilliant in their copy, their words. There weren't a lot of words. It was a very friendly voice, a man with a certain tone. And I love that uh, Susan shared all this, you know, going on first. It was the tone in his voice. It was somebody friendly, like I already knew him, just sharing these experiences. None of these are actors or models. These are at home little videos that they snagged of real people with real words. And the main theme, the crux was, this is our first time. Again, it's no pandemic, you're in a crisis, you're stuck at home, what are you gonna do with these screaming kids and educating them? They swiped all that away and went right to that heart. They went to the heart and the flair of what they were doing. So um, children working together, little kids, um, they don't even talk about uh, decorating or sofas or buying one of their um, amazing beds you have to put together, but I think the hope that was put into their perfectly chosen copy uh, stole the show along, along with these visuals. Um, Lori, just a quickie. The, the, uh, someone put in, um, in, the, in the copy, it said RDN. Was that, was that spelled out earlier in the copy so that the audience knew what that was? Um, regarding the IKEA that we were talking about, um, the I want to make sure I understand. The, I think the other one where it said the woman was an RDN. Right, it right. It was giving the title. Yeah. yeah, that one. The uh, earlier oh, one. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I believe that was maybe under here, you know, when when we went in. But yes. And and maybe it wasn't. Yeah. yeah so actually, there's a the little tip for you that that's just a making sure everybody knows what they're talking about. You know what, that is a great tip because um, I'd probably read other ones and maybe learned that, but that's a yeah. great tip. And like don't expect everybody to read every single word. That's, that's great. Yeah. Great, I was like- It has nothing to do with COVID, which is great. Yeah, all right. So <laughs> getting back to this one, I think I forgot to tell you um, the gentle colors. Look at these. I did a kind of a poor job probably doing these screen captures, but there's nothing flashy or vibrant. Everything's so calm and still and full of like loving together emotion. So colors are very important. And then again, look at this little subliminal logo here. Anything, David, on a uh, copy or voice music um, strikes you? Know, you? It, it's interesting that you show this because one of the things that I've been looking at a lot because I come from, you know, ad agency advertising is what are they doing now, right? And there's so much that they're doing that we can learn from, like how they, how they talk about being at home and how great it is to be at home or how they use, you know, Zoom kind of effects which when you see that, it gets your attention and it makes you feel, oh, it's part of what's going on now, right? Mm -hmm. They're showing it in a Zoom way or they're Zooming instead of being in a place where they're talking to each other, right? They're Zooming with each other or it looks like, you know, how the, today sh how the Tonight Show is now where someone's doing it from their home. Now, those people are doing it from their home or they're or like this, they're showing people in their homes. You know, there's so many things that you can take from advertising it's like, how can we incorporate that? How can we give it that, you know, how can we get uh, customers to send us in videos of themselves now, right? Well, the other thing is, I don't know if you guys were feeling this, but for the first few days, I kind of didn't know what to do with myself. I've never been involved in something like this. So just take, um, this woman and her child exercising together. You can't go to the gym anymore. You can't go to these sporting events. So it's almost like setting a tone like, look, you're okay. There's nothing wrong with you. Everybody else is having a fight with their children about third grade homework. People are exercising on their own messy carpet. This man is just looking out the window. I remember myself looking out the window a couple of days and I still do it like, what the hell is going on? So it's almost bringing that like, hey, I'm okay. 
I can't see anybody else. I'm stuck here in my home. This is setting a good tone for me and making me feel good. Like, you know, I can make it, we can make it together. Yeah, that reassurance acts. Yeah. It's so okay. important. Great word. I don't know if anybody's a cook like me, but I love to cook. I've always followed Ina. Um, some of the reasons behind a couple of these companies that I follow is, is because they have the budget for these huge teams of copy, thinking, design. So if you go to some of these and look at them later, um, I think you're going to learn so much. But when Ina comes on, look, she has that blue shirt. Obviously, she realizes that everybody's at home drinking or they can't go out and drink at bars anymore and have a fun time. Her and her husband try to set the tone like, it's okay, like we're having cocktails tonight. Here's our favorite one. Her voice is exciting and helpful, but so gentle and warm. Um, she pretty much conveyed that it doesn't matter. You know, it's always cocktail hour in a crisis and we're going to make it through this. So she gives you a recipe. I'm going to show you another one, but look at this. She doesn't go on and on about things, nor did she in the video. She never talks about, um, you know, the epidemic and, and all the downfall of it. She kind of plays it up into something positive. The only thing they do do is uh, this little hashtag stay safe which I thought was, you know, just the right touch. This is probably the most brilliant one that I could find that she did. So um, again, what I said in the beginning, I feel so strongly about uh, these items are not things that just to do today in this crisis, we should be doing these. And this is a uh, deep, deep thinking that's coming into play here. Again, she has a huge budget and a talented team, but crisis or not, this is where most copy goes down the wrong trail. I read a ton of copy and so many times a copywriter, they can't help it, but they're going around the barn to tell the whole story and I'm bored out of my mind and I haven't even gotten to the juicy part. I don't even know what they're gonna sell. She gets right to the point. She realizes we're all stuck at home. A lot of people are not used to uh, buying groceries and cooking to go out to eat a lot. So she goes right into, you know, lots of apples in the fridge, make an old fashioned apple crisp. Um, and she tells you how to make it. And she just brings this down home flair um, and reminds us that, you know, you might not have everything you need. She's chosen items with just a few ingredients that are simple and she knows her stuff. Again, the stay safe. So it doesn't really matter um, what you're selling or when. Um, you need to know your audience and meet them right where they are and don't do all the shenanigans before that because you will definitely lose them. David, anything um, for you on this? Yeah, I mean, I would certainly um, agree You gonna make this recipe? No, they, yeah. David was to eat it, I think. Uh, <laughs> you know, just, just, just how wonderful that copy is. I mean, it's hard to write really simple copy, you know? And I think people are afraid to do it or they, they it, it takes some, you know, some editing, but just lots of apples in the fridge, make my old fashioned apple crisp. Yeah, it's like Tart and sweet apples for the best flavor and texture, but use whatever you have. Um, and then a little humor, I, you know, kind of clever. I never met an apple crisp I didn't love. <laughs> you know, it's just so perfect and it's not overbearing. It's not trying to convince me of something. It's just my neighbor coming over who's chatty and, and, and chatting with me. Uh, it, it's just wonderful copy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. All right, so on Goop, this is another team that, you know, has unlimited budget and high talent level. They've really done a good job on Instagram as well as um, some of their emails. And I check them a couple times a day because they're the driving force of so many ideas. If you need a couple places to go every day, just to kind of get in touch with those words or the colors or the looks that they're using. So stay at home. Um, I've been trying to test drive some uh, real words myself instead of that copy speak and saying them out loud, um, pairing it with a sale. I've been helping my customers with that 
I, I don't know if you can see this, but it's a pale pink. And I know somebody asked about colors and tones. Um, the photos are grabbing the attention here and we just say it uh, very clearly right here. There's not a ton of copy. They want you to enter and get going. Caring, kind, soft colors. These people got on the bandwagon quickly as well. They realized that um, women are stuck at home. They can't go to the beauty salon. They probably came full force first. Um, I think this is genius. You know, nobody could go out and take videos. So this is a little tip as well. Maybe you can go back into your archives. Think outside the box um, using some of these tips. Pull some of the videos you already had and go ahead and tie them into some ideas. So um, the words like your guide, your guide to, how to, it doesn't matter if it's a hair care product or something else giving somebody like a command and something you can do it's going to be very easy and if you crack this open uh, maybe you want to go to this site you see everything is so easy to read big fonts and an easy to understand copy so again um, they've used these serif fonts um, and uh, sans serif fonts in some of the things that they're doing and uh, just really quick copy and they're going for impact heavy up here on the top drag them down, make them want to push this and watch it. And they don't um, get you so confused with what you're supposed to do on this page. It's a guide, you know, how to. So with the question on the colors, this has changed. So I want to be very careful today because it's changed yet again since I made this. Um, at the very beginning, we all saw items in email, on the television, anywhere we looked with CDC, there were the words red, you know, urgent, oh, alert, be careful, beware, don't do this, do that. So I scratched out the urgent, you know, like three or four weeks ago when I created this. Urgent is kind of okay right now in finance, we're coming back to it. So. Just so you know, like if you're writing finance copy and doing some of these videos, I work with a lot of investment teams. Uh, I'm starting to use that again. I am being careful of the font and I'm trying to make it so it doesn't look just like all those health things. Does that make sense that we're coming to us? Because they, they keep coming through our emails and then you don't know whether it's a real financial thing or is it a CDC thing, something from the government. So. Um, a particular team had done this and this was a little makeover I did. They were using lots of red up here and these types of skinny, like non-friendly fonts. Um, I pulled a little different photo here of Gilder. Uh, he was more colorful and exciting and I used just a teeny tiny touch of red here and kind of reprojected these words. And as you can see, um, this font is just easier, more friendly, but still it's commanding the words that we're speaking to. Uh, blue tones, we talked about that already. Uh, coupling those with some of the lighter blue tones and just be careful of scary fonts. The serif fonts like Times, uh, those are working well, Georgia, and um, things that are so skinny and hard to trust. You know, I'm, I'm just wondering, and David, you might have a sense of this. Um, with Boardroom, you know, we, you know, Marty invented a font. He had Boardroom Bold, uh, which was a combination of some fonts. It's, it's not exactly the urgent there, but we were mm -hmm. black and red. We were, you know, it was a very, and, and Lori's right. I mean, mm -hmm. we were all fear for the most part. And I don't know what they're doing now because I don't follow them anymore. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious if, if they have, I think they did make a, a, a move away from that. Um, did they, David? You're, you're muted, David. They've tried a lot of different um, layout techniques. Sometimes different work, sometimes it doesn't. They, they've kind of redesigned their look. Lori's probably a little more sensitive to that than, you know, Mm -hmm. And I am, yeah. but they, they, actually, Michael Feldstein just said they moved away from that. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah this font is Impact, Impact, and Aiken. Where uh, right. Clayton and I, uh, those were our two favorite fonts. Like this Impact, like I would just probably hang loose on that for a while and go something with a, more of a Helvetica bold or something that um, just a little more yeah. meaningful. 
for a while. But if anybody has any questions about colors or something, please feel free to just hit me up and let me look at something. I'd be more than happy to help. You know, um, I think that if I could I just want to say one thing, which is I think that the reason for this is is important. And maybe you said it and I spaced out or something, but, <laughs> you know, it's like when people are in a state of being afraid, you don't want to make them more afraid. They're, it, 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 it'll, it's off-putting, you know? I mean, that's great when they're comforted and you want to talk about the apocalypse to sell them stocks or to sell them, you know, supplies or something. You need to do that. You need to, if you want to sell diabetes cure, you need to get them worried about diabetes. But the, if they're already worried, then you want to, you want to be the, you just want to be the solution. You don't want to be the one stirring up. That's a great point. And again, like Brian was saying, knowing your avatar and, and Susan as well, one of the biggest things we do either together or separately in projects is finding who that person is. What are their pain points? What keeps them up at night? Listening to the testimonials and the items from customer service so we can hear their pain and um, just read through those again and again and again and um, really understand. So this is a uh, beauty line. You know, I work on a lot of, lot of beauty products, so I tend to research those. But in any case, this was the first team that um, started doing big, bold um, announcements of the percentage off in, instead of just hiding it. It was a huge coupon but the big thing is most people were putting wording like um hey if you if you can't get through you know your your shipment's going to be delayed by 21 days or don't expect this to arrive on time or whatever they go just like uh our online store is open you know the distribution center is fully operational and all orders are being shipped so drive it home with things like that's going to be helpful. And um, so instead of somebody saying like, oh my gosh, it sounds like this is going to um, take a long time. I really need these products. These people make you want to um, order from them instead. So you could be doing yourself a disservice by plastering that all over the website. I do want you to, I, I didn't put it in here, but one of the companies I follow a lot um, is Apple. Obviously, they have a big budget, big talent. Go to Apple. If you weren't watching them from February till now, not one time did they do anything huge on ordering and where that everything's going to be behind. They have just one little message and you have to click through and go all the way to the buying segment till you see a uh, copy and it'll say, you know, due to what's going on, we might be a little late or something like that. Um, that could be for two reasons. Instead of having to continuously change in this event and kind of tone down your language, they did it one time, one and done. And also subliminally, uh, it, it brings you back to what Ogilvy uh, team is doing is just stay on brand with your message, your color, your design, everything that you're uh, speaking to. Anything on this, um, David? Yeah, no, I think that's, you know, I agree. That's, that's absolutely critical. You know, you stay on brand because that's, 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 that's reassuring. People yeah. say, oh, I know this brand. I know that Ogilvy Red. You yeah. Know, I, it makes me just feel a certain subliminal comfort. This is huge for any of you. Um, we're all in a rush right now. Um, I changed some of the words in here to protect the innocent, but uh, I was just called to review a new headline and lead in. But you know me, I got to read all the copies so I know where I am. I have been founding, finding so many of these things. Um, it, it, see, see right here, I'll just read it. Um, they're not in some far off distant land with a phone delay. Our associates walk by their offices every day on their way to get their morning cup of coffee. That's out, that's wrong information. So you will find these, now I'm having certain teams with certain clients, ha just assign a team member to look through the whole website. It'll be in teeny tiny copy that you know, you're not noticing. You're in a rush, you're trying to come up with a new idea. So maybe you're working on the front of the website, on a sales page, changing a brochure. It doesn't really matter, but really beware because this can date you, this can, make you look like you're not 
up to full steam, but it's, uh, there's a lot of blunders going on out there. Does, it, does that make sense to everybody? Just really read your copy and make sure it's not talking about um, the way we used to be. Yeah. yeah, I, you know, this is a great example of that and it could be even more subtle you know, like an arthritis thing. And, you know, you'll love playing with your grandkids or, you know, something like that. Um, right. It's, it's so easy for, for copy to seem like it was written, po you know, before all this. Mm -hmm. Just e even sometimes just the tonality of it. You know, um, guy I used to work with always used to have us, no matter what, if we change things, if we were revising something, never cut and paste, right? Always retype it in. Because as you're typing it in, you'll yeah. notice, you know, little, little subtle things. You'll word it just, and you'll notice stuff like this, but you'll notice also the subtle things that need just mm -hmm. to be said a little differently. Now, that's, that's a great point. This one, this is near and dear to my heart because um, I feel so many people, you've probably seen the reports of everyone losing their job. Um, our prospects might have had a change in their income. So we want to give them a way to remain a loyal and welcome customer and um, choices to get back on track when they can, because we all need hope. I love this. This might be something you incorporate into your email list, something that you, a newsletter, um, can I skip a delivery? Can I change something? Maybe have other options. Uh, again, tying in with Susan, you know, that voice that answers the phone what they say, some of the options, they're good listeners, um, that can change the game. Obviously, we're all going to get out of this. So you want to retain the people you already have, continue to build, but retain those people no matter what kind of horrible situation they are. I, I mean, saw right a thing now. for Ad Age today where it said, um, there was just a little thing at the bottom. And it said, if you want to change your uh, mailing address for Ad Age from your office to your home, click here. Oh, uh, that's brilliant. Thing. Yeah, of course, right? People are at home. They're not getting the mail at the office. So yeah, that kind of thing, to think about that kind of thing, to in, go through the day of your, your prospect, right? Mm -hmm. What's your prospect doing? Okay, he's going to the mail. Oh, he's going to the mail and he doesn't have the Z age because he came to the office. We should have a thing. We should have a button for that. <laughs> that's a great idea. Just thinking outside the box and that's, I knew, you know, maybe none of you had any of these kind of businesses exactly, but I'm really hoping that, you know, you can take the sheet back to your, you know, team, your collection or your customer and share some of these things with them and really get you thinking, get the designers and the copywriters, the strategists working together and uh, really nail it. So we talked a little bit in the beginning about the choice of colors. Um, I know a lot of us work very diligently on writing the copy and displaying like 100% guarantee. Normally they're in a green circle, maybe gold. One thing I came up with is this shield. Now subliminally, you know, I think all of us would probably feel like a shield protects us very protecting. It's there. It's wrapping its arm around me. You could put something like this next to the bottle of your supplements um, on any of your website pages on the footer up in the top. Uh, but you don't have to just stick with that green regular satisfaction guaranteed. Something like this idea might help. I've been coupling a trusted sign with the guarantee Legally, you know, obviously you're going to have to make sure with your department that this flies, but I, I can't see any problem with that. You can even buy these and change uh, the wording to fit your need exactly. That's a little tip or make one exactly to fit your particular company and just put it on everything you're doing. Um, the handshake is very nice too. So um, I think uh, it'll support your changing needs of your audience and, and what they what they need to feel. It's not just the copy, not just the voice, not just the design, the psychology, but that whole feeling of all those things rolled together in a big ball that um, are gonna make or break your sales and um, help you move forward. You so know, I, I, much, yeah, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, you know, much as I love words, 
I, I'm always struck by how powerful visuals are. You know, it seems hokey, it seems tacky. Oh yeah, put a big sign that says satisfaction guaranteed or trusted with a thumbs up. But damn, it, <laughs> it, just, it goes right into people's subliminal brains, right? They see it and they, they breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. It triggers something so primal in that. Just a little bit of, you know, all the associations that SEALs and things like that have had through the years, mm -hmm. you know, from advertising or from whatnot. And it's, it's just so powerful. I, I just want to emphasize that. And that's coming from the words guy. That's, and that's coming from the words guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I hope that was helpful, and um, uh, I'm down really for any uh, questions. And um, yeah, anybody uh, have a question for David or Lori? Um, it's uh, yeah, it's I, I, you know, John says there's something about hearing an expert breaks something seemingly simple down. Um, it's really, really helpful to do this. Um, so I really appreciate you, Lori, and you, David, for taking the time for. The accelerators, which I, I know that they're, uh, I know they're very appreciative by looking at the chat. So, um, any questions? How about any of the copywriters, Belinda or Kim? Um, I've got one, Brian. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, uh, Lori and Dave. Appreciate you both. Um, Lori, I've got a question with you, and you're great. You know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of both of you. But uh, um, I've got a question. So I do a lot of uh, copy, and I'll actually build the funnels for clients inside of ClickFunnels. It's not always the final version that they take to market, but it just helps me get, you know, things positioned and uh, visualized and then kind of understanding the process and the flow. Sometimes I do use it, but when I'm building those, those pages out in ClickFunnels, um, you know, uh, one of the rules of thumb I always try to follow is like the four color advertising layout uh, or print layout. Do you have any other uh, tangible quick hit tips on, on how to best use the design feature in like car trail or click funnels or anything like that? Like other rules of thumb that would be just quick generalizations to, uh, to lay out and design. Yeah, I, I hear your question. Um, you know, you can go that route, but there's a variety of other feelings that you can project. You know, if you have a lot of the four colors showing, and I hope I'm understanding your question, you know, I'm going to give you a tip. And, you know, since I work with you a lot anyway, um, I will send you some goodies. But, okay. you know, a look that I'm working on right now, um, and it seems to be winning online, so I haven't tested it yet in print. A lot of white space, important perfectly chosen like black fonts that'll hold the page and not a lot of color, not a lot of okay. bullets that are crazy color. And then just when you get to use either it's a chart or a photo, choose those colors in a meaningful way to kind of all have those uh, a couple same colors in them. Uh, yeah. In this one successful hair product um, we launched a while ago, it was this odd green and purple and it was in every single photo either the hairbrush of the woman or you know the purple and something else so does does that answer your question or does that give you an idea yeah. so you don't have to go crazy with all these colors you know sure. modern is in right now light airy meaningful and perhaps that'll help you Okay. Yeah, that does help a lot. Thank you. Yeah. What I always try to do is I'll, I'll try to tie, like, uh, if, if there are subheads or, or titles or headlines that are bold, I'll try to repeat those same colors throughout the funnel, like on different um, other points of similar emphasis or like uh, other repeats and, and trying to repeat uh, uh, feelings and emotion with color attached to certain words. Right. I don't know. I'm not a designer. That's not my, th I just, it kind of, I, I'm trying to tap into some of the subliminal messaging mm -hmm. there and the psychology behind it. But what you're saying that makes me feel better because light and airy uh, to me sounds like less uh, work for me trying to do something I'm not good at <laughs> anyway. Well, and that's what I was getting to. And I'm glad you brought it up about this um, subheads. So um, if I choose a bolder, sans serif subhead now 
I'm really positioning that in a certain way. I'm keeping some of those in black now on these campaigns. And that's what I was pointing out. Something heavy on the top right at the beginning and um, engaging them as they come in. I'm keeping those subheads black on a lot of things that I'm testing, only using those colors kind of in those hand chosen um, photos and then charts or, or any other data. So um, feel free to you know hit me up, show me something and uh, I'd love to help you. That's awesome. great, though, that you're doing all that. My goodness. Thank I'm you. impressed. Yeah, nice job, Josh. Um, a couple, uh, uh, Belinda Brewster asked a good question. Do you think folks are tired of the in these uncertain times messaging? Yes. see it everywhere. <laughs> and it may be, you know, David has, you, you, Laurie, or David, have some different wording. I mean, I've used, you know, with all the chaos. I mean, there's a lot of ways to rephrase it, but do you have any fresh, fresh copy for that concept? Or do you just not mention it anymore and just say, you know, I, I mean, forward pace it and say, when, when you're finally able to leave your house, you can do this or something like that. Yeah, well, there's certainly a lot of ways of showing that you are writing in the current time right and that you understand what's going on right you know yes. you mentioned not leaving the house or you mentioned you know without people feel it when you start to be a little manipulative right you know in these difficult times it's like oh, oh someone's going to try to tell me something right exactly. in these difficult times exactly. you need my product you know or something i i feel a little manipulated and it also because it has the ring of familiarity, because I've read it so many times, I, I, it sort of, I, I sort of zone out now, right? Whereas the stuff Lori showed us was always kind of fresh, right? It, it was always that feeling like, like uh, Ida's thing about the apple crisp, right? It wasn't like, in these difficult times when you're home, why not make apple crisp? It was just like, you know, uh, you know we got to eat in a crisis or whatever it was, right? It's just... It's fresh, it's new, it's, when it's appropriate, it's fun, it's interesting, it's, you know, it's not one more heavy burden on my shoulders. You know, I was gonna yeah, say I mean, too, oh, sorry, go ahead, Brian. There's just a couple of, uh, um, Matt says, while well, you have some extra time on your hands, that's a little more subtle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Drew yeah. says, the claim is already getting high on, into the levels of sophistication. So I said, I'm going to uh, channel Gene Schwartz and see if he wants to do an addendum in his book. Um, and uh, there was another one here. Uh, oh, uh, without mentioning pandemic use, you can still, um, you know, maybe even, you know, just, just, you know, a little bit of, you know, I'm not tone deaf, but I'm not focusing on it. Yeah. You know, at a certain point, you could even use that, right? You could use like, like, aren't you sick of all those emails about how in these difficult times, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And, and then you do a turn from that, right? Look, we all know you got to have a healthy immune system, right? So let's talk about it or, or, you know, whatever the turn is, right? Yeah, I, I like the... Oh, all, all I was going to say to that, though, is um, I don't know if this is right or wrong, but this is kind of what I've been doing. And I'm kind of forcing my clients to think like in six or eight months or, you know, Q4. And I'm having them stop a lot of that. It might be just one little thing so that they're aware that we know what's going on. But who doesn't know what's going on? Yeah, and I don't want to, you know, negate anybody, but um, I'd, I'd cut it out, like I cut it out a couple weeks ago, and I'm just moving forward and business as usual and just being careful not to honk somebody off, but I would definitely step away from it now and um, kind of let it just sit. That's a good point, Lori. I mean, I think that the, uh, you know, if it's, it's certainly if it's your house list and you've mailed them a lot already, you know, you can bypass it pretty much. For cold traffic or, you know, an outside list, I still don't think you want to go crazy with it because they're all sick of it. Um, so, yeah, I agree with you, Art. I agree. It's something to test, right? You know, like yeah. there are people, 
a lot of uh, financial people that I work with have tests with just, just plain old greed. It's like, just like before here, just make a lot of money doing this. And people respond to it with no mention of coronavirus or anything. Um, yeah, Bill, Bill Stewart had one uh, further back in the chat, which was, uh, you know, uh, for real estate, you know, s sell your home safely. And, and uh, I guess it was, and then there was a, a tagline of make more money or make, make, you know, whatever. And maybe, maybe you can do that, Bill. I mean, I don't know, you know, if it's, I, I think you can go either way. And it's, of course, if Marty Edelston was alive, he would say, well, everything is testable. But go ahead, Bill, you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, Brian, I mean, I've rewritten that headline about eight times since we've been on. And <laughs> two, two issues people have is safety. So it's, I even reordered some of the words. So how to safely sell your home and still get top dollar. They're concerned about two things. Concerned about, can I do it safely? And the market must suck. And I have my prices gone down. Yeah, yeah. So those are kind of the two things shooting for without the scare tactic. Yeah, I would probably, I mean, I'd maybe soften it a little bit and say, you know, because safety is the big thing. So, you know, sell your home safely. Um, and instead of saying top dollar, which sounds like more aggressive, I would say something like and and get and get with and get every every dollar you deserve or something like that. That just softens it a little bit. I'm sure David can come up with something better. But um, remember, I'm not a copywriter, but it's, it's have good. you seen what um, Ryan Searhand is doing in no. that space. He, tr he trains um, real estate agents, but he's got some nice stuff on, you know, why stop sitting at home, you know, stop not doing anything. Here are the things you need to do to, well, to sell homes for people, but that could be easily trans uh, transformed into sell your own home or whatever, because it's similar things and, and a similar kind of approach. You know, it's like, you don't have to stop the selling of houses just because, you know, just because of what's going on. All right. Thank you. Um, thank you, Laurie. Thank you, David. We're a little over two hours, so I want to get people uh, back to work. But I know you're all home, so it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> and uh, thank you so much, Laurie and David.